Hello there and welcome back to Bold for Bucks. I'm Stephen Bresnaw and today we're going to be talking about scope bases. What scope base should you choose for your rifle? We'll answer that question in this video. So first we're going to talk about some of the really basic things. Some guns, some rifles come with an integral scope base built into the rifle or a rifle may come with them such as the Ruger Precision Rifle. Other rifles, such as the Tika, might have grooves or slots in the rifle on top of the receiver that you can attach rings directly to without adding a scope base. However, there are some advantages to using an aftermarket scope base on some rifles. You have a couple basic designs. For example, this is a Weaver style scope base. This one has to uh, happens to be zero MOA and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Now the Weaver style scope bases sometimes come in two different dimensions or widths, okay? Now I recommend that you go with a 20 millimeter wide width, the, the basically a standard Picatinny width on a scope base instead of the more narrow ones because very few high quality rings will fit those. So on the weaver style, you'll see these slots or grooves in the top of the scope base. Now these grooves allow you to place the ring and the recoil lug area on the ring inside that groove so that it keeps the scope ring and scope more secure when the gun recoils backwards. Now, the biggest disadvantage to the weaver style is that it doesn't have as many grooves as your Picatinny style. This is kind of a hybrid uh, design where it's a little bit of a Weaver and uh, Picatinny mix. Um, some uh, true Picatinny rails or bases will have uh, solid metal between uh, both sides here, whereas this you can see in the middle does not have a groove, it just empties out. Now that does allow this to be lighter if you want a lighter uh, rifle package than the full uh, raised area between each groove. Now, let's go back to the Weaver. So, a scope base allows you to be able to move your scope rings back and forth on the rifle. And what this can allow you to do, let me get this in focus better here, what this can allow you to do is adjust your scope and therefore your eye relief better to get it right in that sweet spot so that when you're behind the rifle you don't have your scope too far forward or too far backwards so that um, you can't get a good sight picture. So typically your weaver bases will be a little bit lighter, um, sometimes cheaper quality, not, necessi not necessarily. Um, and I say Weaver style because a Leupold and some other companies make very similar uh, style scope bases, but typically I refer to these as the Weaver style where you have a couple uh, a notches in there, a couple grooves you can uh, choose from. Um, whereas the Picatinny, you have grooves at fixed distances. Um, but they allow you, the biggest advantage to a Picatinny style over the Weaver style is that you can choose any one of these groups to put your ring in. So you have a lot more um, surface on your uh, base that you can mount that ring on to get just the mount exactly where you want it, depending on the scope you're mounting. When you're looking at scope bases, you also want to look at the type of screw. Now this is a cheaper weaver base and it has a flathead uh, screw in here. So what I typically find is that these flathead screws tend to deform um, and strip out a lot easier. They tend to be a little bit cheaper and the head itself, you know, using a flathead with a lot of torque tends to strip it out or easily deform or damage the screw head. So I don't recommend getting ones with a flat head screw. I recommend getting the ones with a Torx head screw. Um, you know, kind of looks like a star inside there. And those tend to work a lot better. And usually they're better quality metal as well. So I recommend getting one that comes with the Torx head screws 
instead of the Phillips or flathead screws. Now getting back to whether you choose 20 MOA, 30 MOA, or 0 MOA, what is that? You know, when, when I was new to long range shooting, I was like, what? What are you talking about? Okay, so typically you get a scope, and we'll just use this cheap scope as an example here, and it uh, has maybe 40 uh, MOA of adjustment in the elevation turret. Okay, so that means that your zero will probably be somewhere around 20 MOA uh, uh, when this is mounted on a rifle at 100 yards and with using a zero MOA base. A zero MOA, ba MOA base is just a flat base, okay? This is a zero uh, flat base. So zero MOA, think flat base. No uh, cant up and down, okay? No angle. The 20 MOA base will cant your rifle scope down allowing you more adjustment in this turret for long range shooting so that you can adjust more minutes of angle because that'll put that at like zero MOA. Say this is 40 MOA of adjustment and you're a zero MOA. Uh, if you use a zero MOA base at 100 yards, it is uh, set right about 20 MOA. So you're right in between the maximum elevation and the minimum elevation. And then you put the 20 MOA that put this basically bottom this out at zero uh, with a 20 MOA base, it would bottom it out right at, you know, you would be as low as you can go on this turret, okay? And adjustment, as low as you can go in adjustment. Now, that allows you a full 40 minutes, a 40 MOA of adjustment up so that you can shoot targets or dial to shoot targets further out with your reticle. So you can see right here, this is a 20 MOA base. And you can see this backside is, is thicker, it's heavier, um, it's taller. So that's going to cant your scope down, giving you more adjustment for long range shooting. So if you're looking at shooting beyond maybe 800 yards, I recommend a 20 MOA base. And oftentimes, if they're around the same price, I recommend just get a 20 MOA, 20 MOA base because you never know down the road you might want to shoot long range. All right. Now... You're saying, well, okay, you're showing me Picatinny and Weaver style bases. Uh, what if I just want to get a, a ring with a base built into it or a one piece ring? And so that's what we have here. This is a tally ring, okay, for a one inch diameter scope, all right? So you can pick different heights. And I'm going to put a chart um, in my next video where I go over ring selection on what ring height you should choose depending on the diameter of the objective uh, lens on your scope or the bell size of your scope. And we'll go over that in my next video on ring selection. But in this video, you can get these basically at different heights. So uh, what we're gonna call low, medium, and high. So that's gonna give you uh, different levels of height depending on your rifle so that the, the scope doesn't have the bell of the scope hitting the barrel on your rifle. Now, these, this is a typical style where you take this top piece off and there's another screw hole in the middle of this ring and you're gonna screw it to, directly to your base. Now, when you would wanna choose a one piece ring like this over putting a base such as this on your rifle first and then putting a ring on top of your base, let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So you put this base on here, then you put this ring on here, right? Okay. Well, this is going to be far heavier if you're looking for a really light hunting setup for uh, high mountain hunting or something along those lines. So if you want a lighter option, you go with the one piece ring with the base built into it. Okay. And this is going to be far lighter than adding more metal onto your rifle. The disadvantages of using a one piece base such as this is that you don't have any adjustment with the ring um, to adjust the scope for proper eye relief on your rifle. Now, sure, you can take this and you can move it forward or backward in that ring where it allow you, but if you have a scope with uh, very short eye relief um, or depending on the shooting position that you're setting up to shoot, this may not offer you the proper eye relief uh, to really hit that sweet spot. So this is going to give you uh, more adjustment and also can give you, uh, this can give you, allow you more adjustment in where you place your scope on your rifle, whereas this one's a fixed point. The next style of, of scope base 
is one that's built in to the rings. So this happens to be a cantilever uh, scope mount, but they also make these style mounts where the rings are built into the base. It's all one piece, and some of them even have metal the whole length right here. And so it's extremely sturdy design. So now cantilever, yes, it's all one piece. So this mounts onto a Picatinny rail, and you can actually mount it onto a base such as this. Um, or uh, usually these are used on AR style platforms and they are used because usually you're using a scope with a long eye relief and you mount on an AR you want that scope mounted farther forward because the way the rifle's designed it would be too close to your eyes um, if you use regular rings. So they make these cantilever they make these cantilever scope bases and they are pointed this direction. So let's say the muzzle's pointed that direction, that's how the cantilever mount's supposed to be pointed is in that direction. And that allows your scope to be mounted further this direction, further forward, so that you get proper eye relief on an AR platform. So key points here, get a scope base that isn't extremely, extremely, extremely cheap. Get one that's full width. Uh, I recommend the 20 millimeter width, the Picatinny width. Um, I recommend um, getting the Picatinny style rail over the Weaver style because it's going to allow you more uh, placement for your rings and therefore more adjustment um, in the position of your scope for eye relief. Um, I also recommend getting something that is high quality and if you are ever planning on going long range just go ahead and get the 20 MOA base over the 0 MOA base to begin with. Now they do sell bases that are 30 MOA um, and they also sell bases that actually have an adjustment dial built into them where they can go upwards of like uh, 60 MOA, okay, in the base, not in the scope uh, adjustments in the turret, in the reticle. So um, those are usually the ones that adjust um, and have a dial built in the base are extremely expensive. They're made for ELR shooting, extreme long ranges, like over a mile, okay? Um, if you're looking at shooting a mile, probably get a 30 MOA base. If you're looking at shooting, you know, up to 1,400, 1,500 yards, depending on the caliber, just get a 20, uh, 20 MOA base. And, you know, if you're just going for something light and you just want the adjustment in the rings, you want to be able to adjust your rings, but you're just going for a light hunting rifle, you're not shooting beyond 300 yards, you can just go with the zero MOA base. Now, if you're looking for an extremely light mountain rifle setup, you know, ultra light, you know, you want a sub, uh, seven pound rifle setup, then you're going to go with the one piece rings and base built into them. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions about bases and types of bases, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment in this, uh, the comment section below. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say. If you learned something, go ahead and like this video and hit subscribe. Now, one thing, tip just at the very end, always use the blue Glock type on your scope base screws. Hope you enjoyed.